10 things every recording artist will go through. I'm here in Atlanta, I just landed yesterday, so I'm here for a little business. I'm gonna stay here a couple of days, get in a studio with a couple of artists or whatever, but as you guys know, I'm committed to doing these weekly videos, so let's get started. I got my computer screen right here. I wrote down a list of 10 things that every recording artist will go through. It's inevitable. You will go through all of these 10 things. So you've been warned, and hopefully this prepares you for your journey in the music industry. So let's start with number one. You will be rejected by labels. It's going to happen. Some of the biggest artists at the top, like Drake will tell you, like he was rejected more than he was accepted. So remember that you're going to be rejected more than you're accepted. Um, I remember just with different independent artists to this day, you know, sometimes I set up label meetings with uh, different independent artists or just artists of my own and stuff like that. Like people, record labels, hey, uh, we think that you're too similar to this person or you need to work on your style or hey, you're you're adding too much lyrics and it's not a lyrical content um, world anymore. It needs to be more hit. Hey, uh, these these records are too street. They're not record. Fr they're not label friendly or radio friendly. They're not. Or hey, your shit is too poppy. It's not. They all when you every label like they they're always constantly rejecting artists every day and um and I you shouldn't depend on a label to validate how dope you are because every label it's it's a bunch of fucking corny little nerds that just sit on a computer all day and because you haven't because you don't have a proven formula or a proven sound they like to just try to tear you down and stuff like that but the truth is they don't fucking know they don't they don't have their ear to the street they they're not cool they don't know what the fuck is is it the people are gonna like they're not the dictators to the ears to the streets so but if you are looking for validation from labels, which you shouldn't be, just know that most labels are going to reject you. So number two, you will do shows in empty rooms. That's inevitable as well when you're starting off. And a lot of you guys are probably already doing it with just local, um, just local performances, local events, open mic shows. At the beginning of your career, nobody starts off selling out tickets. Nobody starts off packing out shows. Um, I remember there, there's this famous uh, picture of Travis Scott on stage. There's, um, there's like 30 fucking people in the audience. And this picture was taken like, I think, five years ago or six years ago. So it's, it's, it's inevitable, man. If you're an independent artist and you're coming up, do not expect your, you, your crowd, your fan base, they're going to grow with you over time. But at the beginning, man, those, those rooms are going to be kind of empty. And guess what? You gotta, that's a test. You got to keep pushing through. So you've been warned. Number three, you will get no responses to your emails. I, I teach, a, uh, one thing I teach is for independent artists to, you know, hit up different Spotify curators, um, email your way to success, hit up different A&Rs and stuff. But the truth is, you know, those doors are going to get slammed on you more than they're going to be open. That's the truth. Like, that's, and that's just business. That's just, like, if you ever was in sales, then you know you know, if you had to sell cars or stand in front of them in the middle of the mall and try to sell different things, you know, like people are going to just keep walking past you. People are going to reject it. So it works the same way with the emails. Everybody's not always going to respond. You're going to be rejected. Like I've always been rejected most of the time. It's just the, the people that accepted me. Now you see, you see the hits I have over shit, man. I probably produce over a thousand songs with just major artists and independent artists. But at the same time, I've had a lot of doors slammed in front of my face to this day. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to want to work with you. So that just comes with the game. Until you die, you're going to be rejected. And you should always be DMing and doing, you know, DMing different people to try to collab or and, and, and hitting up different labels, hitting up different A&Rs, hitting up different Spotify curator playlists, hitting up just you should always be doing networking and marketing. If you really care about your business as an artist, you should always network and market and try to reach out. But just know that most people are going to reject those emails. Most people are going to reject those DMs. So be prepared for that. All right. So the next thing, which is number four, I wrote, you will get writer's block and not complete your songs. So this is something that I hear a lot. This is something that I get a lot from independent artists who, um, and I actually put this because somebody uh, sent me this DM of what what they should do um the, you know i was i actually i had a studio session two days ago with a real known artist and man we sat in that bitch for like 
fucking three hours. She could, she couldn't even come up with like a hook, and and it was sad. But at the end of the day, it happens. It happens to everybody. You know when uh when Drake got caught for um when Drake hired I forgot the Quentin Miller when he hired Quentin Miller to do those hooks and stuff. It was because he even got writers blocked at that moment in time. You know so. It, it happens to the best of us. You know, we get writers, even as a producer, when I'm making beats, I get stuck in, in the middle of the beat sometimes. I'm just like, you know what you should do? Come back to it. Take a break for the rest of the day. Come back to it the next day or in two more days. But you're a human being. Anything that you're focusing on, you're going to, you're eventually going to get slowed up or writer's block. Somebody's going to text you. You may wake up on the wrong side of the bed. It's okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're a human being. You're going to get a block in anything that you're trying to focus on. It just, it just happens. You can't, every day isn't going to be a diligent day. Every, you want most of your days to count, but some days, it, hey, you just, it just ain't up to speed, you know? So don't be hard on yourself. Writer's block, that that happens. You're you're a creator. You're always pushing your mind to create. Every day is not going to be up, but you want to make sure you have more creative and productive days than you do bad. So let's get to number five. Your friends and family will show you their true colors. Mm. That happens to all of us. If you are if you're trying to fucking chase success, if you're trying to be something in your life, you're gonna. Everybody at the top has that same fucking story. It's if, if, if the minute you want to be successful, there's a road that you got to go down. And part of that road is your friends and your fucking family will show you their true colors. Everybody's on your side and cool until you decide that you want to do something with your life. Everybody has your back and is rooting for you in, until you say that you want to get to the next level and you start showing and improving. When you're down here at the bottom, everybody loves you. The minute you say, hey, I want to go to this level and they have to look up at you, boy, you're going to start seeing some shit. Those people that you thought was your, your, your best friends, those family members that you thought that were real close to you, they're going to start little rumors. They're going to start spreading lies. They're going to even say little rude ass shit in front of your face. These different things is a real test. It's a real test and it's a test that everybody has to go through because a lot of people fucking fail this test. A lot of times when you're trying to better yourself, you're just you're trying to become a better version of yourself. You're trying to succeed in your craft. The people around you, they'll hold you back They um, by by saying like, yo, man, what, what are you doing? Or, hey, man, you changing. Or, hey, you going Hollywood. Or, you, you know, when they see growth. It reminds them of what they should be and what they should be working on. And a lot of people, when you start rising, they want to pull you back down. And they do it through different ways of via rumors, via talking bad about you, via trying to sabotage your career. You know, you know how many, you know what, you know, one thing that I noticed that's common when, um, when I've noticed that a lot of men and women, when they're in relationships, the minute they start working on their business that uh, on their computer or working on their music on their computer, the other person usually destroys the computer. And I know that sounds crazy, but there's so many relationships, including the ones that I was in, where because I was, I, I, they, because they saw me rising, because I was making beats, because I was recording artists and I started popping, they, they poured water on the computer or just did little dumb shit like that to sabotage what I had going on so I could, so I could come back to their level. So, and, and, I, and I know this shit sounds crazy, but I promise you, you're not as special as you think. You're still a fucking human being. And as a human being, if a human wants to become successful, the people that's a that surrounds that human will slowly start to turn their back. And you got to be strong. And sometimes you got to be your own cheerleader and you have to keep pushing through it. So you've been warned. Don't think that you're just the special token person that that's not going to happen to. That's the journey to success. That's what you're signing up for the minute you say, I want to do something with my fucking life. So... Let's get to the next one. Uh, you will be lied to about payments. Self-explanatory. You know, a lot of, and it, usually with these junking promoters as an independent artist, man, when you're coming up, people try you. They try you on little bullshit. Like, yeah, I pay you this much. And then they'll try to give you half uh, at the end of the night. They always try a little bullshit like that. Um, just any, any part of the music industry from labels to features to, Man, people are gonna try you and it with and try to downplay um, whatever you charge. So just just be ready 
to deal with a bunch of junky ass people, especially if you're doing urban music, it gets even worse. You're, you're dealing with coupon ass motherfuckers who, who promise you one thing and as soon as you show up, it's that junky promoter shit where they're trying to just pay you half or pay you lower than what you're worth. Don't ever accept it. You know, so let's get to the next one. Number seven, you will be ghosted by collaborators. Um, every artist when they come up, they're always trying to collaborate with different producers to do joint EPs or they're trying to uh, get features with different artists or whatever, independent artists or major artists. Most of them will ghost you. It's, it's a shame, but people don't really respect independent artists on the grind. It, it's a real fucking job to not really have a name and a brand, but have dope music and, and just really just trying to make it. It's a real fucking psychological war that you got to go fucking go through all these different things. Like I said, it's inevitable. You're going to fucking go through it. So, um, yeah, you'll get ghosted by collaborators. You're going to get go that producer you want to work with. They're going to ghost you. You know, that artist that said they'll do that feature with you. They're not going to text back. It happens. It happens. So number eight, you will get passed on by managers and agents. Um, that managers and agents, they, they act just like labels. You know, once they see you haven't made it, that's when they want to say little stupid shit like, oh, I don't, I don't think you're good enough or you need to work on your flow or you need to. It, it, I noticed that a lot of managers and agents, they try to act like they're, they're, they're the gatekeepers. You know what I mean? Like they try to, they try to talk down to you, even when they know that you're dope. For some reason, they, they get their pride and their ego by being able by by wanting to just down artists and talk shit to them and it's weird it's something that really goes on in the music industry like when you don't have a name and you get and you you know you're trying to pitch yourself to a different manager or agent they in that moment it's almost like they think they're the god or the gatekeeper in the music industry and then they start to oh you need to work out oh you need to lose weight oh you need to do this you need to do this your music isn't sounding good enough this is what as if they fucking know so just know that, you know, managers and agents, they're going to come with that bullshit. They're going to try to tear you down psychologically. They're going to try to add their opinion in what your music should be and what it should sound like. These are fucking cornballs. Don't listen. Just keep moving on because eventually you're going to find an agent who sees your vision, who hears your music, and they see what you're trying to do. And they're going to do everything to get you to that next level. But, you know, it's the music industry and you got a lot of bad apples in there. And you got to learn how to get through that and still keep your pride in your heart. So uh, let's get to number nine. You will go into debt and lose money. And if you're an independent artist and you're watching this, shit, you already probably been just been losing money. You know, studio time costs. You know, you get with the engineers, they say they'll mix it. And then after that, they try to charge you again and say, hey, yeah, we need to master it now. You know, you got all these different monthly subscriptions, uh, United Masters, DistroKid. Uh, a lot of these open mic nights, they want you to pay up front, even though they're telling you they're going to give you a payment of a prize, um, it, equipment, if you want to record yourself, a lot of this shit costs, it's, it's an investment. And sometimes a lot of these investments, they don't pan out the right way. Um, with anything in life, you know, with any business in life, you're going to lose money. That's the nature of the game. Um, you just got to count it as a loss. But you shouldn't let that discourage you from investing into yourself. You should always invest into yourself. You will lose money. That's the nature of any business that you get in. You know what I mean? If you, Once you have an idea or a, you know an invention or some type of creation, or you just want to make it in the music industry, you must put your own money up. And that's just the laws of business. You're going to lose money. All right. Number 10, you will be offered shady record deals by majors and independent labels. I got myself in that situation twice because I was living in a small town. There was no major labels, but you had the dope boys who wanted to get in the music industry that had contracts. I, like, and that seems to be a lot of people's story. You know, they, they signed to this independent label or this independent manager. And then you realize that, you know, the, you know, the, the paperwork didn't match what they were saying. You, you're locked in. And uh, that happens. Um, with even with Diddy, all those, you know, notice all his artists, when he said bad boy for life, bad boy for life meant everybody to this day are still in that, those bad boy contracts for life. You know, a lot of them people got screwed over. Like it's this is the music industry. It's a lot of fucking sharks. There's a lot of fucking snakes. And the first contracts that people will give to you is usually the one that's fucking you over. 
you all make sure you always fucking lawyer up. You know, these lawyers, it, they're not as expensive as you think. You know, you there's there's virtual ones. There's some that, you you know, pay somebody one hundred dollars or fifty dollars to look over a contract it, to make sure that it's in your best interest. And if you can't do that, then I mean, you're you're a lousy business person and you're probably going to get fucked over and never make it. If you can't protect yourself, then you deserve to get fucked over. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but this is your business and your business and your craft should be protected. And people are going to try to infiltrate your business via paperwork that's trying to fuck you over. Some people, let me tell you how crazy this is. Some artists sign other artists just so they can hold them back because they're a threat. That's how crazy this shit goes. Like a lot of artists, they can see you on a rise. Major artists, a lot of major artists, they can see you on a rise and be like, damn, I think that person is going to take my spot. Let me reach out to them and give them paperwork. That way I could control their future and keep them down so I could always stay up. Yes, buying other businesses out is part is business. So paperwork is very important. And most paperwork that you get, it's a battle. And they're trying to fuck you over. They're trying to give you less and take more. So make sure that you, you know, use these different online platforms. Like I said, there's lawyers that charge $30 just to read over some shit. But what's $30? What's $50? What's $100 or more when you're being protected? You got to protect your assets. So just remember that, you know, you will be offered shady record deals. That's that's trying to take more than they should. They should receive 360 deals, all type of shit. The managers will do it, too. And just anybody, the you know. The luck, like I said, I got in two different uh, contracts with independent people. They weren't even fucking known, and they were trying to screw me over. I, and you know, one of those deals, I had to pay twenty thousand dollars just to get out of it. If I had to talk to my younger self and I had to leave my younger self a message, one thing I would say is, don't trust people's words. All that matters is what's on black and white. That's all that fucking matters, because what's on black and white is either what's going to take you to the next level or it's going to bring you all the way fucking down paperwork matters so there you go 10 things that every recording artist will go through i hope this video really brought you some value and remember like keep going keep fucking pushing keep striding like these are 10 things that you will go to go through but at the same time don't let it fucking hold you back you know don't have a weak mindset have a fucking strong mindset this shit is nothing is what is what you go through. It, it, you got to pay the fucking cost to be the boss. So subscribe. I'm going to come back next week with some more content. But out of these 10 things I gave you, leave a comment and let me know which one really resonated with you the most. I look forward to seeing you guys. God bless.